What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here and moving on to the next example. This one's going to be a little bit tricky, a little bit different. So find two possibilities for the coordinates of a vertex of an equilateral triangle. If the other two vertices are at the point zero and zero, so at the origin, and then at zero and negative eight. So to start this example off, let's draw a diagram of what's happening. So we're going to be working with an equilateral triangle and we're given two of the vertices, 0 and 0, 0, negative 8. So 0 and 0 is over here. And then 0, same x value, but then we have a y value of negative 8. So that's going to be down here. Right, so those are two points of a triangle. And then we have to find two possibilities for the third point in order for the triangle to be an equilateral triangle. So notice that, let's say maybe if the other point is like over here, well then the triangle would be like that. Or if it's over here, then the triangle would be like that. Or if it's over here, then the triangle would be like that, right? So basically those, that's how we're gonna connect these two points and then a potential third point. Now, in this particular case, if you think about it, in order for it to be an equilateral triangle, meaning all the sides have the same length, notice how the third point is actually going to have to have a Y value of negative four. Okay, it's going to have a y value between zero and negative eight, the midpoint between it. And so that's going to be negative four. Now this is a special case here because the x values are the same. So this side of the equilateral triangle is actually just going to be a vertical line. If it wasn't, if it was slanted, then this question would be actually more complex and there would be more tools in order to find that third point and it would actually use tools that we haven't covered in the course yet. Okay, so this is a special example here where one of the sides is a vertical side, another side can be potentially horizontal where the x values, or sorry, where the y values would be the same. Here the x values are the same. So the y value of the third point would have to be at negative four. And if you think about it, the third point would either have to be like out here or over here. So if we start working with this point here, the triangle would look like that. Okay, where this length, this length, and then this length are the same. So you can't have the third point have a y value other than negative four. So for example, you can't have the third point like over here on the x-axis because then notice it's gonna be a right triangle and a right triangle can never be an equilateral triangle because with a right triangle, okay, that hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side. This side is always going to be different than this side and this side. Th these two sides can be the same. You could have a right angle isosceles triangle, but you can't have a right angle equilateral triangle, for example, right? And no matter where, if you take this third point and put it anywhere other than a y value of negative four, you're not going to be able to create an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle, if this is one of the sides here, the only way that you could create it is if that third point has a y value of negative four. So that's why this is a special case here. So what we can do is we can figure out what this point is gonna be. Now we know the y value, the y value is negative four. So really all we have to find out is the x value there. And then once we find out that x value, then we can find out this x value because let's say, for example, this x value is gonna be five. So this point would be five and negative four. Well, then this x value would just be negative five and negative four. We would just reflect this point over here. And then the other equilateral triangle would be there. That's why there's two possibilities in this case. So how are we gonna find this x value? Well, first thing we can do is we can actually find what the length of this line over here is, 
And then once we have the length of this line, then we know that the length from this point to this point, or from this point, from the origin to this point, has to be the same length. And then we can do a little bit of algebra to solve for this x value. And then because this is just a vertical line here, it's easy to tell what is the length. Well, from 0 to negative 8, we can tell that the length is 8. Okay, if you wanted to do the full work over here without just looking at it, you can use the length formula. And so we would have 0 and 0, 0, negative 8. So we'd have, let's do x1, y1. We'd have x2, y2. Well, what would happen here is we'd have x2 minus x1, 0 minus 0 to the power 2. That's just 0. And then we'd have y2, negative 8, minus y1, which is 0. And that would be squared. So we'd end up with negative 8 to the power 2, which is just 64. The plus zero, we can get rid of that, and then the square root of 64 is 8. Right? So this length over here is 8, which means if it's going to be an equilateral triangle, it means that this length over here has to be 8, and this length over here has to be 8. So we can use either of these points. I'm just going to use the origin. So the distance from the origin to this point x negative 4 has to be 8. So if we write out those two points, I'll write them out over here. So we got 0, 0, and then we have x negative 4. So we'll let this x be x1. This can be, actually, you know what? I'm going to let the 0, 0. So we'll have x1, y1, then we'll have x2, y2. Okay, the distance between these two points has to be 8. So plugging everything in, we would end up with x2, which is the x value that we're solving for. So we'll have x minus 0 squared plus y2, which is negative 4 minus y1, 0 to the power of 2. And then we know that this length over here has to equal um, 8. And so notice now we have an equation here we could solve where there's only one unknown. There's this variable over here. So if we work this through, x minus 0 is just x, and then x to the power of 2 is just x squared. And then we'll have plus negative 4 minus 0 is just negative 4. That's going to be to the power of 2. This is still all equal to 8. So we'll have 8 equals the square root of x squared plus, notice here, negative 4 to the power 2 is going to be 16. Okay, we're still solving for this x value here. So if we want to isolate for this x value, we want to first get rid of this square root here. So what we want to do is we actually want to square both sides. What you do to one side, you got to do to the other. And to get rid of a square root, if something is under a square root, well, you could just square it, and it's going to give you that thing, whether that's an expression or a number or a variable under the square root. It's just going to have it. You're just going to get it on its own. So that's what we're doing over here to get rid of this square root. We're squaring this whole side, then we're going to square this whole side. So we would end up with 64 equals x squared plus 16, like that, right? And now, bring the 16 over, then we'll have 64 minus 16, which would give us what? 48. That's going to be x squared. And now, to get the x by itself, we square root this, square root that. So x would be the square root of 48. Right? And if you square root 48, you'd get like 6 point something. I'm just going to leave it as an exact value over here. And so that's the x value. Notice that this, when you square root something, it could be plus or minus. So that's where this other x value is coming from. And so the point over here, it's actually going to be the square root of 48 and negative 4. 
and then this point over here is going to be negative square root of 48 and negative 4. Right, so those are the two possibilities if this equilateral triangle has these two vertices with these two possibilities you would have two equilateral triangles. All right, kind of a tricky question. Um, again, it's possible because we were able to get this y value because we had this vertical line here. And so to draw out an equilateral triangle, we know that the y value of this third point has to be between zero and negative eight. Okay, it's just a special case in this case. So we knew the y value and so we were able to plug in that y value here and then solve. Now if this was like a slanted line, this line over here was like a slanted line for example, then the question becomes more complex because then it wouldn't necessarily be like a midpoint. So for example, if we had like a slanted line, then the equilateral triangle would be like the other third point would be like here and this point wouldn't necessarily be the y value that's in between these two. Okay, it would be a more difficult process. We'd have to make two equations and then solve for two unknowns. Okay, and in this case we haven't covered something like that. There would be quadratics involved and stuff like that. So it would be a much more complex question. So I'm just going to keep it at this for now, but if you do get something like this, a potential problem like this, this is the way to do it. You find the length of the side you're given, and then that means that the other lengths have to equal that length, and then you could solve for whatever coordinate you're looking for.